Hi, welcome to another session on concepts. The topic of this video is spectrum and Fourier analysis. However, we will not be going into the mathematical details of this topic, but we will try to understand what is a spectrum and what is a Fourier analysis without going to into, into too much details of the mathematics behind it. The math we'll discuss uh, at some point later in a later video, but uh, the focus of this video is to understand what a spectrum means and what is Fourier analysis and how do we obtain the spectrum of any signal. <coughs> right, uh, first of all, if you notice these uh, two waveforms here, they are both in the time domain. So what we have on the x-axis is time. So both these are in the time domain. So basically these waveforms are si or signals are nothing but voltages changing with time. So we call them to be existing or present in the time domain or as time domain signals. In contrast, the spectrum is a representation of the same signals but in the frequency domain. So we will transform the signal from the time domain to the frequency domain. Frequency domain. So that means uh, the spectral representation uh, would be a plot or a graph which has frequency f on the x-axis and some other parameter on the y-axis. Now, why is spectrum important? Because it gives us uh, a perspective into the signal from a in a different way in terms of the frequency content present in the signal. The first thing we need to remember here is that how do we convert a time domain signal to frequency domain signal? So the the transformation or the mathematical procedures that are performed to convert from time domain to frequency domain is the Fourier transform. So that's the transformation that is used to go from time domain to frequency domain. Uh, there are variations of the Fourier transform which are referred to as the Fourier series and the discrete Fourier transform, the DTF to the discrete time Fourier transform and so on depending on the nature of the signal in the time domain. Again, we'll leave these topics for another session, but uh, they simply represent all these, all these transformations as the Fourier transform. They mean the same thing, just the, uh, the signal in the time domain is of a different nature, right? So we have uh, three definitions here. First is the time domain representation of the signal. Then we have the spectrum, which is the frequency domain representation of the signal. So we have this as the spectrum, which is the frequency domain representation of the signal. And how do we go from time domain to frequency domain? By performing what is called as the Fourier transform. Now, broadly, what the spectrum, uh, what information does the spectrum give us? The spectrum tells us about the frequency content of the signal. So spectrum is nothing but frequency content of the signal. So this is the information we get from the spectral representation of a signal. Well, if you look at these two waveforms which are here, these are very simple waveforms which contain only one frequency. So we can directly see from the signal itself what is the frequency of the signal. For example, the, the this particular signal is a cosine wave which completes one cycle in one second. That means the frequency of the signal is one hertz. Similarly, this waveform is completing one cycle, uh, sorry, two cycles in one second so that's the time unit of one second and from zero to one second it has undergone or completed one two cycles so that means this this particular signal here is 
uh, having a frequency of 2 Hertz. So the spectrum will give us the frequency content of these signals. So it will have a, fr uh, a frequency on the x-axis and the magnitude of the signal on the uh, of that particular frequency on the y-axis. So it gives us the frequency content. But the frequency content itself can be of uh, two types. We can have the magnitude of but that particular frequency, but it can also have a representation of the phase at that particular frequency. So the spectrum is of two types, or it contains two pieces of information. So that is, we can have the first type, which is the magnitude spectrum and then we have what is called as the phase spectrum so that means the magnitude spectrum gives us information regarding the magnitude of the different frequency components present in the signal and the phase spectrum gives us information related to the phase of those frequency components present in the signal. Now the focus of uh, this video will be restricted to magnitude spectrum again without going into the mathematical details of it. Uh, we'll come to a more detailed discussion including the detailed mathematical notations and representations in another separate video. Okay. Right. Now let's try to understand the spectrum of these two waveforms which we have here. So we'll try to plot the spectrum of these two waveforms. So let's go here. Uh, as uh, we discussed, this particular waveform is completing one cycle in one second. That means the frequency of this signal is one hertz and it is only that one particular frequency. So the frequency of this signal is F equals one hertz. And similarly, the frequency of this signal, which is X2 of T, x2 of t which we just name it as x2 of t and this one as x1 of t so x2 of t is completing two cycles in one second so that corresponds to having a frequency f equals two hertz and as we said the spectrum or the magnitude spectrum gives us the frequency content or the magnitude of the different frequencies present in the signal. Now one of the things that we also need to do is the, the notation is that if we have a signal in the time domain denoted by say x of t or x1 of t then we denote the corresponding uh, spectrum as x1 of t since frequency is the independent variable and since we are interested in the magnitude we'll call it uh, represent as the magnitude like that and uh, it is also possible to go from the frequency domain back to the time domain so the transformation that is that is done to go from the time domain x1 of t to the frequency domain x1 of f is the Fourier transform so we'll simply write the Fourier transform as ft and the inverse operation is also possible so we can go back from the uh, frequency domain to the time domain by performing what is called as the inverse Fourier transform again the mathematics will deal with that in a, in a separate lecture or separate video okay coming back to these uh, uh, representations of the spectrum so we are doing what is the magnitude spectrum so these are nothing but magnitude spectra so of these signals since we have frequency on the x-axis and the magnitude of those signals on the y-axis. Now the first signal x1 of t is having a frequency of 1 hertz. So on the frequency axis we will have uh, this, uh, this notation this says a signal present at a frequency of 1 hertz so this frequency if we say this is in hertz so it exists at 1 and what is the amplitude of that particular frequency if you notice here the amplitude is uh, 1 2 
3 4 so it's going up to 4 volt in amplitude so the amplitude should be uh, represented as 4 volt present at 1 Hertz but the convention that we will do is whatever is present at 1 Hertz we will we will place a mirror image or a replica of that at a negative frequency of the same value minus 1 Hertz but we will divide that particular magnitude uh, it half and half between the positive and the negative components so we will uh, remove this 4 and in, in place of the 4 we are going to make it 50% of the 4 which is 2 so we will make it half of it on the positive frequency and half of it on the negative frequency so that means at 1 Hertz we have a magnitude of 2 volts and at minus 1 Hertz we have a magnitude of 2 volts as well now why do we have this negative component uh, the negative frequency component and where does it arise from that arise, arises from the math and it is, uh, it is just a mathematical convenience uh, the negative frequency as you would see in one of my earlier videos negative frequencies do not exist in the real world they are present in our analysis only for uh, as a result of mathematical convenience so this is the convention that we will follow whatever is the frequency present we will have that frequency represented but the magnitude we will divide half of it on the positive frequency and the remaining half on the negative frequency so since the magnitude here is uh, is 4 volts we give half of it that is 2 volt to the positive frequency component and another 2 volt the remaining half to the negative frequency component similarly for the second signal x2 of t whose frequency is 2 hertz now the spectrum will therefore be having a notation or, or an impulse present at 2 hertz and a corresponding replica at minus 2 hertz and what is the amplitude of uh, each of these four uh, uh, components since the amplitude of this particular signal is also 4 volt and we have to divide that uh, half and half between the positive and the negative frequency components so we'll have to put uh, 2 volt on the positive side so that's 2 on the positive and 2 on the negative frequency component so that is basically uh, what is called as the magnitude spectrum so if we look at only these uh, uh, spectral representations over here these give us information about the signals on the left but on the frequency domain it tells us what is the frequency present in the signal and how much is the magnitude of that particular frequency so similarly here it tells us that uh, there is a frequency of 2 Hertz present and it has a magnitude of 2 volt and minus 2 Hertz present and has a magnitude of 2 volt or basically it's basic uh, there is a signal present uh, at 2 Hertz having a magnitude of 2 plus 2 that is 4 volt right let's take this a bit further to a signal which is not so uh, whose frequency content is not so apparent as in these cases okay these signals we can clearly see what is the frequency present because these are sinusoidal waveforms and their frequency can be determined based on their time periods directly but uh, not all signals that uh, that we encounter in practice are so apparent in terms of their frequency content so let's look at one more example where it may not be so apparent so if you look at the first signal here and if we can call this as say x1 of t and the red signal if we can call this as x2 of t and the third signal that we have here this last one here is basically a summation of x1 of t and x2 of t so i have produced this third signal here by adding these two waveforms together so x3 of t uh, x3 of t is basically x of t is basically or it has been produced by adding x1 of t and x2 of t now if we look at the 
as a waveform for x1 of t it is apparent what the what its frequency is for example uh, it has it is completing one cycle in one second so this is a frequency uh, of one hertz so if we write this this is a frequency equals one hertz similarly if we look at the red waveform which is x2 of t it is completing at one and two cycles in one second so that corresponds to a frequency of 2 hertz so f is equal to 2 hertz but if we look at the third waveform it completes one cycle <coughs> from here to here also in one second but it doesn't tell you what all frequencies are present in the signal so you can't readily find out that this signal contains a 1 hertz component and a 2 hertz component because as I said I have produced this particular waveform by adding x1 of t which is having a frequency of 1 hertz and x2 of t which is having a frequency of 2 hertz but if I did not show you the the blue waveform and the red waveform and showed you only this black waveform x3 of t then it wouldn't be apparent to look at this waveform and say that this waveform contains a component at 1 hertz and another component at 2 hertz so in order to find that information we'll have to take the Fourier transform of this particular signal and the Fourier transform, for transform would then give us information related to its frequency content and hence we can get that information from the spectrum of x3 of t <coughs> excuse me so uh, simply put if we had to plot the spectrum for x1 of t let me just uh, draw it uh, very roughly just to be uh, complete here so if we if we had to draw the magnitude spectrum for x1 of t we'll simply call it as x1 of f and its magnitude so since it's one hertz so it will have an impulse at one hertz and an impulse at minus one hertz so it's one and minus one and since the amplitude of this is one volt the that means it is that one volt would be divided half and half between the positive and negative components so we'll have it as uh, 0 0.5 over here and 0 0.5 over here similarly for x2 of t if we had to plot the spectrum let me draw that a bit neater so x2 of t will have frequency on the x-axis and we'll call this as x2 of f magnitude and it is having a frequency of 2 hertz so one uh, two hertz would be further away than one so we'll have it at two and minus two and again the amplitude since the amplitude of the two hertz signal is also one volt it is half positive and half negative half of it would be on the positive frequency that is 0 0.5 and half of it on the negative frequency 0 0.5 now since we know okay since we know from uh, that the x3 of t has been produced by adding x1 of t and x2 of t that is by adding the one hertz signal and the two hertz signal naturally if we had to draw or plot the spectrum of x3 of t spectrum of x3 of t then we'll have to plot it something like this so we'll have frequency on the x-axis and the magnitude on the y-axis x3 of f right and what are the frequencies present in x3 of t since we have added x1 and x2 which is a 1 and 2 hertz respectively x3 of t x3 of t has a 1 hertz component and a 2 hertz component so that means x3 of f will have a component at 1 hertz and a corresponding replica at minus 1 hertz similarly it will have a component at 2 hertz so at so 1 and minus 1 and we also have a component at 2 hertz that's 2 
and minus 2 so we have 2 and minus 2 right in this particular example since I have uh, taken the amplitudes of both x1 and x2 to be the same we have these representations of the same height for both 1 Hertz and 2 Hertz but it is quite possible that signals have uh, different magnitudes for different frequency components so x1 of t uh, sorry L, the 1 Hertz component is having an amplitude of 1 volt so we divide it half and half between the positive and negative frequency so it's 0 0.5 here that means this height here is 0 0.5 0 0.5 and similarly at the 2 Hertz component it's half positive so it's 0 0.5 and So 0 0.5 and so on <coughs> so that is the spectrum of x3 of t which is x3 of f now if you notice here when we have plotted this uh, the magnitude spectrum so this is the magnitude spectrum so let me be more precise magnitude spectrum of x3 of t now the magnitude spectrum of x2 of t as well of as uh, as well as x3 of t has some missing information for example in x1 of t we know it's a cosine wave it's a cosine wave of frequency 1 hertz so we put uh, a component at 1 hertz on the spectrum <coughs> the the signal for x2 of t we we know that it is a frequency of 2 hertz so we put a component at 2 Hertz but what is not apparent from the spectrum here is that x1 of t is a cosine wave but x2 of t is a sine wave so this magnitude spectrum tells us that there is a component at 2 Hertz but it doesn't tell us that this component is sine or cosine generally the notation is that we put uh, we represent the spectrum completely in terms of the cosine wave okay again why the cosine wave is our reference that is ar that arises from the math from the mathematical representation and we will leave that for later uh, but let's focus simply on understanding that and just remember that we represent the spectrum only for the cosine components so it automatically means that this is a cosine component at frequency 1 Hertz having a, a magnitude of 0 0.5 volt similarly it also means this this means that there is a cosine component of frequency 2 Hertz and magnitude 0 0.5 volt but in reality this is not a cosine but a sine so we have to provide that missing information that this is not a cosine but a sine and that missing information has to be provided by or it is provided by the phase spectrum so the magnitude spectrum gives only part of the information on in the frequency uh, domain about the signal the rest of the information is contained in the phase spectrum so basically the sine wave can be represented as a 90 degrees shifted version of the cosine wave so we just say this is a cosine wave of frequency 2 Hertz but with a 90 degrees phase shift so the phase spectrum will give us that information related to the phase shift so similarly here this is x3 of t is the sum of a cosine wave of frequency 1 Hertz and a sine wave of frequency 2 Hertz but the magnitude spectrum does not give us the information related to the uh, the, to this being sine or cosine it just uh, we just interpret this as being a cosine so we we'll have to add the, the missing information of the uh, we have to provide the missing information by depicting the phase spectrum in which we will show that this this will have this is a cosine wave with a zero phase shift and this is a cosine wave with a 90 degrees phase shift so a cosine wave with a 90 degree or minus 90 degrees phase shift is a is a sine wave so the complete information in the frequency domain is provided by magnitude and phase spectrum together so 
to get the complete information in frequency domain we need two pieces of or two parts of the spectrum one is the magnitude spectrum spectrum and the second one is the phase spectrum we'll be doing some examples related to that in a separate video so together the magnitude and phase spectrum give us a the complete representation about the uh, frequency content present in the signal right uh, the next thing we want to do is uh, we want to uh, notice a few things about these uh, spectral diagrams that we have made uh, up to now so if you look at these spectral diagrams uh, we notice that these spectral diagrams are discrete in nature they are not continuous but discrete they exist uh, they contain components only at uh, specific frequency components in between they don't uh, there, there's nothing present there so basically the spectrum is uh, the spectra that we have drawn here this way uh, this one as well as this one as well as this one they're all discrete now if you look at the time domain waveforms for these corresponding spectra, we notice that these time domain waveforms are periodic in nature. So one of the observations we draw from this is that if the time domain signal is periodic, then the spectrum or the Fourier domain is discrete in nature. So periodic in the time domain corresponds to discrete in the frequency domain so <coughs> let's uh, move down on this point so we can have time domain and frequency domain time domain and frequency domain so since sine and cosine and sum of uh, sine and cosine are all periodic, so when we add sines and cosines, we also we end up with a signal which is still periodic. So if we have a signal which is periodic in the time domain, then the frequency domain or the spectrum is going to be discrete and the opposite would also be true if we have something discrete in the time domain then we are going to have oh, the frequency domain or the spectrum to be periodic right this is an important uh, observation and uh, again we are going to we'll use this information at some point uh, later in a future video but it is an important observation and a property that uh, if the time domain waveform is periodic then its corresponding uh, if the time domain waveform is periodic then this spectral representation is discrete Okay, similarly here, the time domain is periodic, the spectral representation is discrete, and <coughs> conversely, if the time domain is discrete, then its spectrum or the Fourier transform would be periodic in nature. Okay, now let's go into the mathematical notation of the spectrum. So let's go into the mathematical notation only without going into the process of doing the actual computation. So just by looking at those diagrams from the previous pages, or so from these diagrams here. So just by looking at these diagrams, we'll try to write these uh, representations mathematically without actually going through the uh, mathematical process of computing the Fourier 
transform. So, mathematical notation of spectrum. Mathematical notation of So let's take the first example of frequency 1 hertz where we had x1 of f it had a component at 1 hertz and minus 1 hertz so that's 1 and minus 1 with an amplitude of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so if you have to write x or write an expression for x1 of f so x1 of f would simply be <coughs> Uh, what is this particular signal here? It's an impulse function which is present at f equal to 1. So it is basically uh, delta, it's a delta function, delta of f. But this delta of f is shifted to the right by 1, so it's f minus 1. And this delta function has an amplitude of 0 0.5. So we'll write it as 0 0.5 delta of f minus 1. And we also have a corresponding component at f equal to minus 1. So it's plus 0 0.5 delta of f minus minus 1, which is f plus 1. So this is our uh, spectrum or the Fourier transform of x1 of t. So how did we get this? We got this just by looking at the spectrum and the basic knowledge of, uh, of the delta function which we discussed in an earlier video. But the mathematical process which would give us is the Fourier transform. So if we had taken x1 of t and applied Fourier transform to x1 of t, we would, have, we would get x1 of f. All right. I'll put a 1 here, which is nothing good. Okay. Similarly, if we had to uh, do it for x uh, and plot its spectrum, so frequency on the x-axis and x2 of f magnitude on the y-axis. Okay, these are magnitudes. So it had a component at 2 hertz and a component at minus 2 hertz so that's minus 2 and 2 and both had an amplitude or magnitude of 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so we would write this as x2 of f to be equal to 0 0.5 it's a delta function delta of f minus 2 it is located at 2 plus 0 0.5 delta of f plus 2. So that's the mathematical notation or the spectrum of each of those uh, signals x1 of t and x2 of t. And again, uh, just to elaborate this a bit further, x1 of t happens to be uh, a cosine wave of frequency 1 hertz and amplitude 1 volt. So if we had to write the mathematical notation for x1 of t, it would simply be x1 of t is equal to cosine 2 pi f t. f is equal to 1. So this is cosine 2 pi t. Similarly, if we had to write for x2 of t, it would be x2 of t is equal to cosine 2 pi f t f is 2 hertz 2 pi into 2 t which we can simply write as cosine 4 pi t so that means uh, if we had taken cosine 4 pi t and applied Fourier transform to this the answer would be uh, what we have got here on top so that would be 0 0.5 delta of f minus 2 plus 0 0.5 delta of oh, 0 0.5 delta of 
f plus 2. <coughs> It's not so clear, so let me also rewrite that. 0 0.5 delta of f plus 2. Now, we have uh, done this process intuitively by understanding uh, what is the meaning of the spectrum and first of all plotting the spectral diagrams and then after plotting the spectral diagrams, by looking at those spectral diagrams, we have then written the expressions for the spectrum which can also be done by computing the Fourier transform of the corresponding signals. Okay, now let's uh, look at the x3 of t and write the expression for the Fourier transform of x3 of t. <coughs> so if you have the, uh, if, you, if you just redraw the spectrum of x3 of t, which is having a 1 hertz component and a 2 hertz component, so that's f on the x-axis, and magnitude of x3 of f on the y-axis. So it had a component at 1 hertz and minus 1 hertz. So it's 1 and minus 1. And it also had a component at 2 hertz and minus 2 hertz. And all of them had an amplitude of 0 0.5, 0 0.5. I'm just redrawing the spectral diagram which we had on the uh, previous pages earlier. <coughs> and if we have to write the expression for this spect uh, magnitude spectrum, x3 of f is equal to, so it has a frequency component at 1 hertz and minus 1 hertz with a magnitude of 0 0.5. So this is basically an, uh, a delta function at uh, 1 hertz and delta function at 2 hertz so we can combine the 1 hertz components together so it is delta of f minus 1 plus delta of f plus 1 and both of them have an amplitude of 0 0.5 so that's the 1 hertz component plus uh, we have a delta at f equal to 2, so that is delta of f minus 2 plus delta of f plus 2. And again, both of them have an amplitude 0 0.5. <coughs> so that is the expression for the Fourier transform of x3 of t, so x3 of t, which is equal to cosine pi t plus sine 4 pi t right and let me make a little correction on the previous side so this particular thing is not okay uh, this is the x2 of t we had earlier is sine not cosine but the magnitude spectrum remains the same right so I just need to write this as sine sine 4 pi t okay right so the magnitude spectrum tells us what is the frequency present in the signal and what is the magnitude of that particular frequency component but it doesn't tell us what is uh, whether that frequency component is a sine or a cosine or any other shifted version of the sine or cosine but the convention that is followed is that the spectrum is represented in terms of the cosine wave so we we'll always represent it in terms of the cosine wave so <coughs> that means to complete the information we need the phase spectrum uh, in many practical scenarios uh, where phase does not matter we will use only the magnitude spectrum but there are situations where the phase does matter in which case we need information related to both magnitude and the phase so we need both the phase uh, magnitude and the phase spectrum that is when we have the complete information so <coughs> the magnitude spectrum magnitude spectrum and phase spectrum 
give complete information. about the signal in the frequency domain. In the frequency domain. Right? And how do we go from the time domain to the frequency domain? By performing what is called as the Fourier transform. <coughs> All right? Uh, we'll discuss what the Fourier transform is and what are its properties and so on in a separate lecture. And uh, we'll see you again soon with uh, more details on spectrum and uh, also with the information related to the phase spectrum in the next video. Thank you.